morning, everyone. How are you today? My name is Michael Leitner, and I'm the president of the Rockland Development Council. Today, we'll hear from some remarkable people. Because of time constraints, we always try to keep the day brief while impactful by hearing extraordinary stories of philanthropy. In 2017, on behalf of the Institute for Nonprofits, Cornell Cooperative Extension of Rockland, conducted a survey of the county's nonprofit businesses to determine their economic impact. The numbers are fairly incredible. Over $909 million in economic impact, including $512 million spent in Rockland, $286 million brought into Rockland, and over 12,500 nonprofit employees. These numbers, while large, hide a plethora of stories of sacrifice and kindness. Today, we've got a small sample of that. Before the program gets underway, I'd like to recognize a few people who have made today's event possible. Once you all, please stand. Please hold your applause until the end. Firstly, all of our gold sponsors, including Brevard and Associates, Kane and Boniface, Dominican College, Hightower Westchester, Arita Rockland, Judith A. Pachter, PDI, Rockland Community Foundation, and United Hospice. Thank you for your generous support. To our silver sponsors, including the Heart Rockland, Bridges, Child Care, Resources of Rockland, GMG Public Relations, Gold Cap Consulting Group, Head Starter Rockland, Giovannio, JCC Rockland, Meals on Wheels, Michael Shalele Architects, Shear Strategy, Good Samaritan Hospital, People to People, and the United Way of Rockland. Thank you for your generous support. <laughs> to my board and committee members, including Maddie Shearing, I'm going to make every single one of you stand up. Uh, Maddie. We have, we have a semi-large board, so we'll clap the for everyone. Uh, Esther Shulman, Karen Kissel, Beth Bay Dubuff, Peter Lane, Alana Height, Susan Lynn, Robert Salmon, Courtney Boniface, Walter Goldman, and Judith Perry. Thank you for your time. Uh, would all of our past award recipients please stand? Uh, thank you for working yeah. uh, with all, all of our elected officials, please stand. Thank you. Without each of you today, it would not have been possible. You are the very voice of the land of being Rocky County. I would not ask the Master of Ceremonies, Peter Lane, to say a few words. We were all quite surprised to see this going on. 
And my father walked around to the back of the room and tapped the teacher on the shoulder and told him that he was a witness and that he was there. The teacher was shocked and asked my father to say a few words. And he did. And to hear a group of about 20, 12, and 13 year olds in complete silence listening to my father's words will be a memory that I will have forever. The unspeakable, unspeakable events and those that follow were based on hatred. We live in a county and a country today where hatred, bigotry, and intolerance are increasing at an alarming rate. And we should not accept that. Every person in this room has an obligation to share compassion and understanding. After all, that's why every one of you are here today in this room. We are here to celebrate philanthropy in our community. And philanthropy literally means love of humanity. So the fact you are here supporting our wonderful honorees and to hear our amazing speaker tells me that you love our community and you love humanity. But you being here today is simply not enough. We have to strive to become better people and to help those around us do the same. So when you leave here today, reach out to one person and help them become a better person and ask them to do the same. Because making our community better is what it is all about. In Judaism, we have a belief in Tikkun Olam, which literally means healing the world. Let us use today as a start for each of us to help heal our world. In a few minutes, we're going to hear from the keynote from our keynote speaker and how she succeeded helping others. It's an inspiring story of helping complete strangers with simple acts of compassion and love. It's now my honor to introduce our county executive, Ed Day, to share a few words with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate that. Okay, come back forward. Good morning, everybody. It is my pleasure and my honor to be able to welcome you today to the 20th Annual Philanthropy Day Breakfast. Uh, very, very aptly entitled to celebrate the spirit of giving here in Rockland County. Uh, if I may, just for a moment, just depart from that. Um, today, we are burying a very special man, um, Mayor Tom Watson, the first African American village mayor. Uh, he's, he's buried today. And um, most people know him as that, but they don't know of the impact he had on the fire training center, the fire safety and fire emergency services on his county. He spent 25 years there and taught many people how to handle things, and that is where we are today. So a moment of silence, if you would. Thank you very much. Uh, this room is filled today with some of the most dedicated and hardworking individuals we have here in Rockland County. Our county is a great place to work, to live, and to raise a family. Thanks in part to your efforts and to help those you who come to your organizations for help. I, can, I can't tell you how rewarding it is to see this room is filled every year. Year after year, the people who continue to do the difficult work required to run a nonprofit organization and also the kudos to all the volunteers who make this work. I've worked closely with many of you during my years as county executive and hope that you are as pleased as I am by the results. We just had a wonderful conversation with uh, uh, Diane from People of People uh, and efforts we're making to assist in getting uh, it, 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 it security. We've strengthened the relationships between the county departments and our nonprofits that help us in delivering the vital services we need here to our residents. And I want to thank all of you for your willingness to work together, both with each other and local government, to accomplish good work. I hope that your example spreads as we continue to improve upon the processes we use and the service that we provide to our residents. I want to congratulate those who are being honored here today. I'm proud to call the friends and your deep commitment to what it takes for Rockland County a great place to live. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. I'm Maddie Shearing, the Vice 
Vice President of Marketing for the Rockland Development Council. Before I introduce our keynote speaker, I'd like to announce an exciting collaboration among several nonprofits. Rockland Development Council, the Institute for Nonprofits, Leadership Rockland, and the Rockland Community Foundation, with support from Dominican College and United Hospice, are pleased to be bringing Volunteer Network's nonprofit or group camp and speed dating program to Rockland in the spring of 2020. The program is seeking to connect local professionals and new leaders with the opportunity to bring their skills and their passion to the boards and committees of our local nonprofits. If your nonprofit, and if there's many in the room, is interested in connecting with potential leaders, or if you or someone you know is looking to make an impact in our community through board or committee service, please take one of the flyers or brochures on your table to see how you can learn more. That's this. This is for the nonprofits who are interested, and this is for potential. The land of the day brings us together to recognize the achievements of community members and gives us an opportunity to raise public awareness about the important work that our nonprofits are engaged in throughout our community. Many, if not all, of our nonprofits started with an idea to meet a need. The same can be said for our keynote speaker story. Genevieve Vittoro was a successful television marketing executive in New York for over 20 years little girl's question changed the course of her life forever. As a result of this question, Genevieve began delivering pajamas and books to children in shelters. And soon thereafter, jumped off the corporate ladder to found the Pajama Program in 2001. The Pajama Program was a nonprofit which had, has been recognized nationwide for its success. An international speaker, consultant, and author who has been interviewed on Today Show, Oprah, Good Morning America, CNN, and many more, Genevieve has made it our mission to inspire people across the globe to listen to their heart voice connection and pursuing their passions to achieve success. It is my pleasure to introduce the Human Connection speaker, Genevieve Pitoro. I never in a million years thought I'd be standing here today. 20 years ago, I thought I'd be Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> That's what I wanted to be growing up, watching TV on Saturday night. She had everything I wanted. I'm the firstborn Italian parents, dad off the boat, wanted to come here, have a family so his children could go to college, and then his oldest daughter could have babies. <laughs> that's, that's what he wanted. I wanted to be a television producer. I wanted to be a single woman in a big city, sitting in a great office. That was success for me. My dad asked me time and time again. My sister got married, my brother got married, my other brother got married, he sat me down every time. Are you sure you're okay with this job thing? <laughs> I was. I did. I loved it. And I was on my way climbing the corporate ladder. I was single. I had a really nice co-op in Riverdale. I got to travel for work. And one day in this really nice co-op in Riverdale, I had a couple hours to myself. I was 38, so now how old I am. And I heard a voice from here. Now, I was used to hearing voices from here that I would ignore. <laughs> Probably a lot of us ignore. <clears throat> but this one came from here. I feel the difference. And loud and clear, I heard a voice ask me, if this is the next 30 years, is this enough? And it stopped me cold. I never thought about beyond day to day, living the life I had always wanted, and I realized in that moment, no. What, what was I doing besides doing for me and making other people rich and doing what they wanted and living for, for no reason, for no legacy, for nothing to change? And all of a sudden, a light went off after that, call it a hard voice. And I thought, I am missing children.
there was something to be said for my dad from Italy and my mom sitting me down and asking me if it was okay that sister and brothers got married and had family before me. So I really didn't think that they'd appreciate me going out and rounding up babies in some way. So I thought, how can I get them into my life? Reading the papers, as we all do, I knew that there were shelters. I knew there were places the police, the social workers would bring children who were in harm's way. I called the police. I asked them, where do you bring these children that we read about? Now, pre-9-11, you could do what I did. You could call a shelter and you could say, hi, I'm a nice person. Can I come and read to the kids? And they said, you sound like a nice person, sure. <laughs> pre-9-11. That's what I did. I went in, in my suit, unaware of where I was going or what I was going to see. They brought me to a room in a shelter. There were a couple of children's desks. It was pretty bare. I sat on the floor. They came in with the children who sat on the floor. They saw me sitting on the floor. It's a lady in a suit sitting on the floor. And they sat with me. About a dozen children sat around in a circle. I had had children's books with me at about 7 o'clock, and I started reading to them. No idea what to expect. The children were so quiet. They listened to the stories, and the staff came back and ushered them to another room. This happened week after week. Yonkers, Harlem, downtown, East 31st, where there's the major New York City shelter. One night, I followed to where they were taking these children. I was curious. And what they called the bedroom had a couple of futons and a couple of couches. Two or three of the 12 or 15 children, each uh, two or three on a cot on the surface. They had nothing to change into. The staff were really nice, but lights out. And that was it. And I stood there in the dark until they pulled me. All I could see was memories of my mom putting us to sleep at night and the cookies and the songs and the milk and the pajamas and as we were ushering me to the door i turned and i said can i bring pajamas next week and one of the women thought sure we have so much you know we, we have to think about nobody's ever thought of that that would be lovely all we all i could think about was these children in the pajamas so i went to every Every store, every half price place I could, and I loaded up so many pajamas, and I brought them with the books to one of the shelters the next week. Did the same thing, sat on the floor, brought in a different group of children, and I read to them again. And this time, I was so excited. I said, kids, I have a special surprise for you tonight. I had them stand in a line, and one by one, in my big bag, and I pulled out a pair of pajamas I thought would fit the child in front of me. And that worked really well for a few of the children. Halfway through, there was a little girl. Came up to about here. And I have her picture in my mind. She was in pink and lavender. Her pants were too short. Her pigtails were lopsided. Her shirt was um, dirty. And her shoes were what's a, a, size, a size 10 that were so big. And of course, I knew that that's what they had for her. So I tried to give her pajamas, and she shook her head. She wouldn't take them. And I kept trying, she shook her head. But she didn't want to go to the room to go to sleep, she wanted to watch me. So she watched me give them out to the kids. Kept looking over to her, kept motioning. <coughs> Finally, she was the last one. The other kids went into the room to change and go to sleep. And they brought her over to me. And I knelt down and I said, honey, these pajamas will fit you and they're pink. I hold, held on to them because I see you wearing pink pants. Wouldn't you like your pajamas? They're nice and soft. And she whispered in my ear, what are pajamas? Still like yesterday. And I had to explain to a little girl that you put pajamas on to go to sleep. You don't have to wear your clothes. That story haunts me every day. It changed everything. And I've heard a couple of your stories. And the power of your story and what Peter said, the power of that story, 
will stay in your heart and hopefully be conveyed like Peter's was to us. Like I hope mine is to you. Like so many of yours, Rob told me a story, so many of yours stay. And that is what changes everything for all of us in this room. Telling that story, connecting with somebody who gets it, who feels that. Now, I was never afraid of climbing the corporate ladder. Never afraid. The day I was faced with what to do with this pajama thing, I was very afraid because all of a sudden, it wasn't about me. It was about the lists of children that were growing and growing. And I know those of you here who are founders, EDs, sitting on boards, there are scary days. There have been scary days for 20 years for a pajama program. And the one thing that I learned that I didn't know then was how far, how far that heart connection, that story, your stories, will take you if you let them out every day. If you tell people why you're doing what you're doing, how you're doing what you're doing, no matter what the fear is, there will be someone who will step up and who will lend a hand. It's, it's a mysterious thing. It's, it's like the universe is our partner. And it's an incredible way that love and the heart will conquer those fears. It's still scary. I remember not knowing what to do to start this nonprofit. I didn't even know the first thing until we got lots and lots of letters because of an article in Parenting Magazine. Tons of packages of letters. And I opened one of them and I said, can you please send us your 501c3? <laughs> I didn't know what that was. <laughs> and it scared me when I found out it's paperwork, it's lawyers, it's the government, you have to wait, you can't do it until. Somehow, begged enough people, got the lawyer, waited, sweated it out, got the 501c3, got past that hurdle. But every day you're faced with fundraising. I know it's still hard for me to ask for anything, let alone money, let alone trying to explain our goals and trying to attract new people. But if you tell your story every day, there's something that helps ease that fear. We were struggling during the recession in 2008. Maybe some of you were. Nonprofits were closing. You remember 2008? And it was sort of a scary, scary time. It was a scary time for us. And here I am sitting at our reading center in New York City, watching nonprofits close. Wall Street, all the people that were giving money were drying up. And I thought, how are we going to make it through the rest of the year? We're counting on people being generous and everybody's holding back. Somebody called from the board and said, let's, let's play, let's bowl for, for a fundraiser. Let's go bowling. I don't bowl. I didn't know people in New York City bowl. <laughs> And that's the power that you all have. And I, and 
I will consider myself one of you. That if we tell our story and we open our hearts and we make that human connection, our fears will melt slowly and there will be people come up and save, save us from drowning. And I'm sure you've all been through some pretty scary, some pretty scary days. So if I can impress one thing, is we're, you're not alone. I've felt alone many times, especially in the beginning. But when I come here and I talk to you and I, I feel camaraderie and I know that you get it, and I hope you know that I get the, the good times and the bad times. And I think one thing we all feel is, are we doing enough? Could we doing more? Get up so early, have long lists of things, have all those people we love counting on us, and that good work that we want to get done, our goals. And a very, very smart professor, a course I took about 10 years in, said to us, just own that piece of the chain you chose. Don't worry about what comes before or what comes after. Own your piece and do it to the best, to the best of your ability. And together, we'll reach the goal. And when he said that, it took a weight off, off me. Because I think we all share that we want to do more, we wish we could do more. There's not enough time to do it all. So I'm trying to do our piece of bedtime for these children. And if you're all doing your piece for the children, for the people who are ill, for the animals, seniors, all of the group that you're doing so much for, then together we will not only, as Peter said, make it right in this room, but we'll bring love, we'll bring that human to human connection, that heart voice, that love, those stories to people outside this room. Now, I hope that you all have something that inspires you. Somebody asked me, Somebody asked me, do you always think of that girl? Do you know what happened to that girl? I always think of that girl. I'll never forget her. But a few years ago, two and a half years ago, I realized she was fading a little bit from my memory. And it was really, really very frightening to me that one day I might just see an outline of her. So I called my niece, who is an artist, and she lives in Chicago, and I asked her if I describe in full detail what that little girl looks like. Can you draw her? And she said, I'll do my best. So I talked to her for about an hour and a half, and two weeks later, I got her picture.
um, and Barry Dorfman for your awards today. Um, everything you've done for our community. Do you know, often when we hear the word philanthropist, we think of people like Andrew Carnegie, Bill and Melinda Gates, or Warren Buffett. But none of these folks have ever lived in Rockland. <laughs> Today's honorees serve as the perfect example of philanthropists right in our midst, and who we can all aspire to emulate. When I looked up the definition of philanthropist, I found a person who donates time, money, experience, skills, or talent to help to create a better world. This perfectly describes Arlene Rogers and Rob Fellows. They are honored today not for what they have done for a single organization, but what they have done for a multitude of organizations. Arlene presently serves on the board of United Hospice. She's also served on the board as treasurer of the Mental Health Association of Rockland. She was involved with the Rockland Center for the Arts, serving on its fundraising committee and hosting its famous annual barn dance. She's been a member of the Morning Music Club and served on the events committee of the March of Dimes of Westchester, the Rockland County Bar Association, and countless others. In her role as Vice President of M&T Bank and other banks in the past, she has passionately advocated for their financial support of countless organizations in our community. Rob has been equally active in the community and particularly passionate about supporting the arts which is far too often marginalized. His passion for the arts led him to serve for many years as the president of the Rockland Center for the Arts. He was appointed by Governor Cuomo to serve on the visual quality panel for the new Chaplain Z Bridge. Rob serves as a member of the board of directors for the Julio Gar Gary Foundation, which benefits rising opera stars, and for seven years on the board of the Rockland Community Foundation. <coughs> If that is not enough, he's also a member of the Board of Directors of the Rockland Conservatory of Music. And through his law practice fellow, fellows Heimowitz, he and his partner Steve Heimowitz have supported many organizations in the world. <coughs> Together they are longtime supporters of United Hospice. We have been fortunate to be the beneficiaries of their friendship, their financial support, and volunteer efforts. They have attended countless hospice fundraising events always bringing friends along for the ride and introducing them to our organization. Arlene's been a dedicated member of the Gala Committee, where her insights, suggestions, and hard work have contributed to the success of this well-known event. And in fact, both Arlene and Rob have been dancing stars at past galas, <laughs> raising much-needed funds for hospice. They have done all of this without giving it a second thought not believing what they were doing was anything worthy of recognition, while helping to create a better world right here in Rockland. Please join me in thanking them and recognizing them as the Rockland Development Council's 2019 Outstanding Philanthropists. Of However, 
It belongs also to the organization that I represent and the T-Bank, that through their generous financial support and beliefs in the communities <coughs> that we serve. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting the Rockland Development Council and joining us here this morning. Thank you, RDC, for this recognition and for your vision and values, which are to educate, inform, inspire, and motivate individuals in the field of fundraising and development. Congratulations to all the other honorees, and thank you, Amy, for getting us here this morning. Have a great morning, and thank you so much. say how humbled and honored all of you are to receive this award. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that all that we do would not be possible with the support of my law partner, uh, Steve Heinrichs, unfortunately can't be here today. And just as importantly, uh, the people from my office who support what we do, uh, my legal assistant, Carol, who's here, my other legal assistant, Yanira's, and the woman uh, who writes the checks. <laughs> and I've heard this, so they've kind of stolen my line, but I'll say uh, the word philanthropy, phylos, which means love. You know, that reminds me when I was in high school, that was the end of our uh, fraternity, phylos. I didn't realize it was love because we were doing a lot of bad things. <laughs> and anthropos, meaning mankind, uh, humankind, and that's what the RDC is about, helping, reaching out, inspiring, inst instilling and imbuing within all of us the spirit of philanthropy. And each of you, all of us here, in all of your not-for-profits, has a mission. And the mission is really an ancient one. It comes out of the book from the Old Testament Ecclesiastics. And you've probably heard this. Cast your bread upon the water, for you shall find it after many days. And that's what it's all about, casting bread. That's what we do. We cast bread. So keep on doing good deeds. And I know that will happen. But do the good deeds, I believe, from my heart, without expecting anything in return. Do selfish, selfish acts of love, acts of goodness, acts of generosity. And certainly, in our political climate, we need more love, we need more kindness. And you'll find, you'll often find that love is unexpectedly after you cast your bread, comes back to you in return. And that's the love of your organization. It's your mission. It's the love that benefits, that helps. And you know what? It's the same love I have for Arlene, for all that she's done for our community. So each of you, it's not about us, it's about commending each of you who are here. Each of you, because you care. Because you're involved in the life of the community we love. And we all love Rockland County, so it's about reaching out. It's about filling the, bo filling the void, extending a philanthropic hand to others in need. And I'm sure, I'm, I'm positive, that each of you, from time to time, have found your own individual love, some deep satisfaction, some meaning, some fulfillment in return for all that you do. So if I have one advice for everybody in the audience, keep casting your bread, keep doing what the good book of Ecclesiastics says we should all do. 
give out love, give out kindness, and you'll get it back in return. Thank you very much. I can think of no person more deserving of being named Rockland's outstanding nonprofit professional than David Christo. David, who has served as CEO of JCC Rockland for the past two decades, is persuasive and passionate. And for any of you who have ever been on the receiving end of one of his requests, really, really, really persistent. And that's all to the good. David truly believes in the mission of the JCC, which is to serve not only the Rockland Jewish community in all its diversity, but the broader community as well. Under his guidance, the J has grown into an impressive community asset. Listing David's accomplishments in the time I'm alive would be impossible. They are many beyond the support he has garnered for the J. But I don't think I'm out of line suggesting that he is probably most proud of the effort this community made on behalf of the 11 Israelis murdered at the 1972 Munich Olympics. The Minute of Silence campaign was a phenomenal effort that made international waves. We should all remember our community was able to do that and be proud. But it wouldn't have happened without David and his outsized imagination. He never gives up. He has a vision for the JCC and for our community and the persistence to achieve it. I am proud to call him my friend and to be here today introducing him. He is truly my honor. Thank you very much, Marla. For those that don't know, Marla is also one of my speech makers, so she always makes me look good. <laughs> also, I want to compliment uh, Peter Land. Uh, Peter has always told me over the years to be short. He wasn't quite that short this morning. <laughs> but what he said was extremely meaningful, and you can get the sense of uh, meaning uh, from his parents, Elsa and John. So thank you, Peter. I came to JCC Rockland from the business world looking for a new challenge that would provide meaning, and I feel so lucky that I found it. After 20 years, this job, and it really doesn't feel like a job, continues to be as meaningful each day as it was on my first. Even if I am a bit gray on that. I have to thank Paul Adler, who was the president of the JCC at the time, uh, who made that famous call, I think he was trying to call another David. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Paul, because the last 20 years uh, have really been extremely meaningful to me. So thank you. To be here today recognized for the work that is fun and exciting is truly special. I want to thank the Rockland Development Council and the organizers of Philanthropy Day and wish Mazel Tov to Robert Fellows, uh, sat on boards with Robert before, and Arlene Rogers for all they do in our community, and to Barry Dorfman, truly an outstanding volunteer. It is a privilege to be honored with you. When I enter the JCC each day, one of the first of a roughly a thousand people who walk through the door, I walk past the Israeli and American flags and know this place is exceptional, providing so much for the community. And while the JCC approaches everything it does through a Jewish lens, we are here for the entire community. As each day starts, I love greeting the fitness members on their way out to work, or the young children entering the Deborah Conan Early Childhood Center, or to our older adults, and I see Bert and Barbara Steinberg in the audience who I see every day, who attend daily activities 
at the Chase Senior Center. We make a difference in all of their lives. We help them to meet healthier goals and explore new ideas through our program. We provide camp and sports opportunities for children. And if you can't afford to send your child to our outstanding early childhood program, we offer financial assistance so you can. And when someone loses a life partner, the JCC is there for support and connection to the more than 500 other seniors who walk through our door. Less than two weeks ago, we hosted a walk for the future for the Rockland Jewish Community Campus, the JCC's home. We walked for 26.2 miles and raised $100,000 from 500 donors. We did it in the torrential rain because we're passionate about it. By the way, this was not the first crazy idea I've had. <laughs> And it will not be the last. <laughs> and much to the chagrin of my outstanding staff, but I've been fortunate to have their support and that of a deeply committed board of directors. They have backed our community dodgeball event, the Rockland's nonprofits, the JCC Maccabi Games, the Minute of Silence campaign, as Marla discussed, to recognize the 11 Israeli murdered at the Munich Olympics in 1972, and the subsequent film that, we're making, that was made, There Was No Silence, that was directed and produced by my good friend, Joe Allen, a great community leader. All of these ideas sounded a little, well, nuts on paper. And yet, in their own way, they galvanized our community's spirit. The JCC may have a specific mission to support the Jewish community as well as the greater community, and it does it well. But we never forget that part of our role as Jews is to give back to the community in which we live. Being able to do that each day is the best work I could ever imagine. And finally, to my partner, Elena, Thank you for always being there and supportive of me as well. Thank you all for this honor. I'm from the deep 
South. I come from Hamden, Connecticut, which is the deep South. <laughs> uh, so good morning. Um, they, fear, they say the number one fear uh, for people is public speaking. I thought it was clowns. I like clowns. <laughs> um, and I usually don't speak to a group of this size, but uh, I'm, it's a room filled of people I've worked with and friends. My family, my beautiful daughter's here, and uh, people I've worked with on boards and golf outings. So it's, it's a comfortable place for me. Um, I'd like to thank the Rockland Development Council for this honor. I'm truly humbled, proud to be this year's recipient. There's so many of you in the room who could easily be standing up here. Uh, for me to be up here um, truly is an honor. Uh, congratulations to my fellow honorees, Robert, Arlene, David, people I've known for quite some time. They do incredible work in the community. I'm proud to be part of their day. And of course, thank you to Bob Salmon, who has nominated me for this award as a really true friend and has shown me tremendous support over the years. So I'm told I have three hours to convey my thanks. <laughs> so in first grade, um, I think uh, what I would try to say that might uh, have some meaning for you folks, and uh, a story comes to mind about in September, I turned uh, 62 and I was at my daughter's son-in-law Kevin uh, house for a celebratory dinner. And the phone rings and I don't know who it was. I have CRS, which just can't remember stuff. <laughs> um, but it was, a, it was a request to do something for somebody, and I, I immediately said, sure, we can get that done. And I noticed that my daughter was staring at me, and I said, okay, what? And she goes, with your plate so full, why do you say yes? And I said to her, I said, I say yes because, number one, I can, but more importantly, because I should. Um, I almost think it's criminal of me if I have the ability and the time and the talent to help if I don't pitch in and volunteer. So for me, it's, it's kind of like, a, I guess, a gene, like a firefighter who goes into a burning building. So when someone says, can you help, and just that gene kicks in. Uh, some of the stuff that I'm going to say now has just been said. Um, the definition of a volunteer, you, know, you just heard it. But I think they're missing, uh, but Ar uh, Arlene said it right, it's, you have to add to that definition without any expectation of anything in return. And that's the way uh, a person can volunteer their time and their treasure and their talent. Because when you do that, um, you reap so much more. You become part of the community. You get a sense of satisfaction that is really unparalleled. And you be truly become part of something bigger than yourself. For a lot of you, I'm preaching to the choir. I look around the room, I see so many people that I've worked with on so many things, and it's really a pleasure and, and a, a source of pride for me to be part of this group. For those of you who don't volunteer or who can do more, uh, you should. Um, and because Rockland really is a great place to live, work, and worship. There's so many organizations, many of you represented in this room that need volunteers, and there are many other great causes out there that we could all do more to help. If we all pitch in and give of our time, give of our talent, give of our treasures, then Rockland will all be all the better for it. Again, thank you to the RDC. Congratulations to my fellow honorees. Thank you all, and uh, have a great, great day.
This morning's honor reading was so inspiring to me, and I hope to all of you. The way they have dedicated their lives to helping others, and that Barry said it best with no expectation of a return. And our speaker this morning, truly one of the most inspiring speakers I've heard in years. Her mission, so simple, yet so impactful. So when you go back home today, this morning, to your home or to your office, don't just go back, check your email, and go onto social media. Think about how you can have an impact on our community. Do something. Help somebody. Think about what you can do to help heal our world. I hope you all have a wonderful day, fantastic weekend, and I look forward to seeing you here next year when you become legal and have our 21st. <laughs>